So now, the next thing you mentioned, the next thing was about Jezebel. Anybody heard about Jezebel? You yeah, know who Jezebel yeah, is? Yeah. Tell me about Jezebel. I heard about, um, uh, <laughs> No, that was really that the whole, right? Now, you're married. Yeah, well, I, 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 went, I, I know what Jezebel is. Jezebel is a, a wicked woman, correct? Okay, so now you learned about Jezebel in church. I'm going to give you some characteristics of a Jezebel woman. A Jezebel woman is a woman that will not do what this Bible says. Give me that in Revelation 2. You read the one in Kings, but Revelation 2 gives you a little more. Revelation 2 verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Here come. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which thou callest herself a prophetess. Oh, this woman Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. Come on. To teach and to seduce my servants. Here's a question. Are women, according to God, are women allowed to teach men? No, man. Why do you say no? I'm the no. Men are the leaders. Right? Men are the leaders. What do you say? I've mean, heard it before, but I've heard You've heard what before? That women aren't supposed to. Like, what are you here? I, well, women can teach, but they can't like teach they the can, kids. But they like, can't teach men. Maybe like not like a married woman. Maybe a she man is won't be able to teach a man like hand. another man. Uh, okay. okay. Like a, uh, yeah. like a, we we like that, like a man. No. Let's see what the Bible like, says. Come on, First Timothy two. We're we'll calling to read it. First Timothy chapter two, verse eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to assert authority over the man, but uh, to be wait, wait, does everybody understand that? Yeah. Good. You're pastor in your church, you're the male or female? Yeah. Male, okay. Any women deaconesses and all that yeah. stuff? Okay. So now, do your church teach it to the Israelites? They never it's yes or no. They never mentioned Come out of that. You gotta come out of that. It's high time you Latinos and you blacks and Latinos return to the truth that you're the Israelites, because these churches ain't teaching you your identity. Who you are is very important according to God. Because there are judgments for different nations in here. How are you going to know what judgment is going to come on us if you don't know who you are? Right? For example, if it said, I'm going to kill all Dominicans, wouldn't you want to know if that's what the Bible says? If it said, I'm going to kill all blacks, wouldn't you want to know what the Bible says? So now, gentlemen, get them, get them Christ in a second. Jezebel was a teacher, right? That's the first strike, correct? How do you think Jezebel dressed? We don't know. Very provocative? To teach and to seduce my servants. She was a very seductive woman. Come on. To commit fornication. And she taught him to commit sexual sin. That's what fornication is. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And she taught the Israelites to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, get me uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. God gives us a dress code. He gave us, the Israelites, a dress code. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What does that mean? Pants. Okay, oh, pants. Flag. What? Like flag. Flag. <laughs> flag. You know? Meaning pants. In uh -huh. the South, they call them breeches. Uh -huh. Okay? Many women today tight wear pants. pants okay? Tight it could be tight pants. It could be baggy pants. They are not supposed to wear it. <laughs> spandex. Because one time, spandex was... What was the origin of spandex? To, uh, to work out. To keep warm. Oh. It was underwear. It was drawers. Oh, get out of here. Then some white woman decided, hey, I look kind of sexy in this. And every black woman and Hispanic woman said, let me follow her, her lead. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man wear a dress or a bra and panties. You understand? Everybody understand? You understand? <laughs> now, Proverbs 7 and 10. Watch this. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. This is another quality of Jezebel. She met him with the clothing of a hoe. Harlot means hoe. Back when I was young, maybe you yourself, you could tell a difference between a good woman and a hoe. But today, no, you, you cannot tell a difference. The strippers look more respectable than the average day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about what they clothes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever seen some of oh, yeah, the way they dress? They dress totally the different streets, from when uh, they're on the stage. Because they do that all day. Yeah. yeah. Usually, you know, they dress regular, wear regular girls. Uh -huh. They just go to work. I say regular, uh -huh. you go to work, you deal with it. Yeah, man. They're more provocative. They look yeah. more like strippers. Walk yeah, the street. Street. Now, the street. Street. Walk the street. One thing about clothing we learned thus far, women are not supposed to wear what? Pants. 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 Your mama wear pants? Your girlfriend wear pants? 
Sometimes they answer just. What about you? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. What about you? You wear pants sometimes? Yeah. See that? So now that's one law of that Jezebel skirt. This is how you know if you got it or not. Now read this part again. <laughs> I'm seven. not calling you a, a, a no, home no, or anything. Verse no, seven. Let <laughs> behold, they met him a woman. With the attire of an harlot. Madam, when a woman with the clothing of a harlot, come on. And subtle of heart. And she's tricky, she's subtle. A lot of brothers get tricked by this trick, this woman who's dressed like a hoe. You see him on Maury Povich. Yeah. You see him on uh, Jerry Springer. Well, I don't want right. him. You see him at work. I don't want him. Come on. Well, she is saying. loud. Wait, wait, she's what? She is loud. Can y'all tell me about black and Latino women? What are their characteristics? Loud. Loud. But not, but not all, loud. man. Nine out of ten. I, I, nine I, I, nine I, I, out of not ten. Like no loud women. I, I, right, brother? I, See, he says, I, yes, they loud as hell. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't mess with no loud women. And that's good for you. I feel the same way. Come on, she is loud and stubborn. And she's stubborn. You try to tell her your mommy do this, she's like, I'm not doing that. We just that. witnessed that just a little Right, right. we just I, witnessed the woman in front of her mouth. I, 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 I didn't, didn't want to go, go there. there. I didn't want to well, go, go there. Because <laughs> you messed around, she could have been right behind. I hit you with that <laughs> daggone thing she had. <laughs> her feet abide not in her house. So read the verse again. Proverbs 7, verse 11. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She don't stay at home and take care of the kids and take care of the house. This type of woman is a loud big mouth woman. Read. Now is she without. Now in the street. She in the street, she's in the clubs hanging out. A lot of these sisters got babies. They say, mommy, take care of my baby. Where you going, baby? I'm going to the club. This is what the Bible's talking about. This is why these married women, they got husbands, they go home, and they got diseases. Give me Ecclesiasticus 23 about women. Watch this. Women that sneak out on their man and have babies by other men. Then come back home. Where you from? South of Domingo? I'm from here. You from here? What's your... What's your... I'm still working. Okay, uh, you Puerto Rican? Oh, uh, Black American. Black American, okay. I'm going to tell you about... Where are you from, that. brother? I'm just saying that for the sake of the conversation. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't subscribe to that okay. at all. Okay, I understand. Where are you from, brother? Dominican, it's okay. I used to work downtown that had a lot of Dominican sisters there, and they had a lot of boyfriends. And I say, but wait a minute, don't you got a man in Santo Domingo? They go, yes, Poppy, but what they don't know won't kill them. Get me that Ecclesiastes 23 about having children. You know, I get straight to the point. Ecclesiastes 23, verse 22. Listen to this. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. So shall it go with a woman that leaves her husband and brings in an heir, meaning a child, by another man. Come on. Whoa. For first, for first thing she did, she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High. She's disobeyed the law of the Most High. And secondly, and secondly, she hath trespassed against her own husband. She trespassed against her own husband. Come and on. thirdly, and the third sin, she hath played the whore. She played the whore in adultery. In adultery. Come on. And brought children by another man. You see that every day? Every day you be like your mom. How, as dark as I am, if I got my wife give a baby with light skin and blue, I'll be, wait a minute, my baby ends up looking like my man over here. I'll be like, yo, what's my wife and me dark skin? I'll go, if my baby come out like him, I'm going to be like, yo, what's up? Or if him and his wife, the baby come out like me. Yo, what's up, mom? What's going on here? You know somebody been tipping, right? Okay, was that it, Kyle? So, 24. Come on. She shall be brought out to the congregation and inqui inquisition shall be made of her children. That's inquisition shall be made. This is what God says. Inquire about that baby. Whose child is that? So the Lord knows. So today they got DNA testing and all that. Paternity yeah. Yeah. But the Lord Almighty knows. Because some brothers have never had a DNA test. A paternity test. God says, I'm going to be the judge of this thing. When bad things happen to that child and that mother, it's all judgment of the one true you can't escape him you can't that's why you see mothers and mothers and children run down in the middle of the street you be like yo why god do that why did god <laughs> allow that to happen <laughs> oh, I if you can rewind yeah, yeah. the time you know why god allows certain things to go down but as men and women we go we sometimes we don't know oh it's just it was the devil it was an accident no 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 that's no accident no, come on. psalm 68 oh, verse 20. No he is the our god is the god of salvation and unto god the lord Belong the issues of de from death. See that? Who belongs? To, who creates the issues of death? God, the Lord. Give me that one in First Samuel two and six. I'm gonna show you some more because somebody might say God don't kill. They say to us, "Oh, y'all false prophets." 
My God don't kill nobody. We just read Psalm 68. Yeah. Now let's read 1 Samuel 2 and 6. Come on. Wow. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord kill it and, and make it alive. The Lord what? The Lord kill it and make it alive. So who kills, brother? The Lord. Who the kills, Lord sister? Lord. The Lord does that. And he makes alive. He brings life back. When you're in a hospital on your dying bed, he's the one. You might give praise to the white man, but God says, no, I'm the one that gives you life. I'm the one that gives that man the skill to bring you back. Come on. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. That's right. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You see that? So when God brings a judgment, you can't deliver somebody. Like when God brings a famine in Africa, you can't say, let's send a care package in it and stop the famine. You can't do it, okay? Like Katrina, when the floods came, you could not stop that, okay? What you got for me? Isaiah 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See that I, the Lord, do all these things. So you understand about Jezebel, the characteristics of her? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 14, 31, please. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So all these churches where you got women as pastors and leaders, they're out of order with God. Out of order. And they're the ones that allow their daughters. Give me that Leviticus 19, 29. I'm getting on a woman because the woman is the ones that teach hope. The kids. It's the man's job to guide the woman. It's the woman's job to guide the child. But it's all out of order. Not only is she guiding the child, she's guiding the husband too. Call and read it. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Read, read it louder. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. How do you prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore? Anybody got an idea? Putting what? Putting her in a beauty pageant. Okay, give me another way. Make her famous. Make her famous? Mm. Anything else? How about this? Dressing her like with tight pants. Okay, I like that. Dressing her out of order. You putting little Sarah in spandex. You putting little Sarah in mini skirts. Okay? That's, read it again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Here's what they say in the ghetto. When you get 15, you can get a what? A boyfriend. You had a girlfriend. You had a girlfriend, right? We all had girlfriends when we was ignorant. What did we do when we got girlfriends? Sex. See that? Sex. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. There's no boyfriends or girlfriends according to God because it promotes... Give me some words. It promotes a sexual lifestyle. It promotes AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, yeast infections, divorce. that's what, divorce, <laughs> that's why a lot of our young girls are sick and in the hospital, huh? Reckless breeding. Reckless breeding, right, okay, little Johnny, where your daddy, I don't know who my daddy is, on Maury Povich with three different men, Maury, I think he's baby daddy, look at his nose, Maury, he's not the baby daddy, ah, did he get the next man, Maury, he the dead. Look at his lips. That's the baby dead. He is not the baby dead. Okay, Maury, here's the next one. He the baby dead. Look at look at his hair. He is not. You see it all the time. Here's the question. Ninety percent of our a what? We just said again. Ninety percent of our women are born without two parents. Born without two parents. Children are born without two parents. All that is that what we read in Leviticus 19, 20. I read it again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. So let me